What's going on guys? It is Lutfi back again with another video and we have now reached the round of 16 in this Euro 2016 tournament and it has been a great tournament so far and in this video I'll be running through the matches in the round of 16 and also my prediction on who would move on to the quarterfinals and therefore while making my predictions i'll also be recommending you guys the players that i think you should have into your team for the quarterfinals so let's start off first with the first match it is switzerland taking on poland well definitely i think poland would be moving on into the quarterfinals and some players that you guys should take note of it is uh blasikowski he is a midfielder for poland some sort of a playmaker he has been very involved in lots of Poland's attack and Grozitski also is a player to take note of but he hasn't been doing so well in this tournament and he only amounted four points and Grozitski is only at 6.9 million euros whereas Blasikowski is 7.5 million euros do take note that the prices have changed in this round and some players would be more expensive and some players would be slightly cheaper depending on their performance forwards for poland i think milic is a great choice at 7.5 million euros he has amounted 13 points as compared to robert Lewandowski, who is at 11.5 million euros but only got six points definitely Lewandowski is yet to start scoring like he used to in Bayern munich well, if you guys want to take that risk, you can invest in him. If not, Milic is a great option. Moving on to the next match, it is Wales taking on Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland really making a run for the money in this tournament. Really proud of themselves at how far they progressed. Wales, on the other hand, looking to progress on to the quarterfinals. Gareth Bale and Aaron Ramsey look pretty solid. And I think Wales got this match and will progress on in the tournament. Next up, we have Croatia and Portugal. Well, the Croatians actually won Spain two goals to one, which was some sort of a shocker to me. Well, Sergio Ramos actually missed a penalty when it was tied 1-1. And the Croatians took advantage and Perisic scored the winner for them pretty close match to call i should say this is because ronaldo seems fired up in the last group stage match they scored three goals ronaldo had two nani had one so if i were to call this match i would say it is really close but i think midfield wise the croatians have the midfield forward wise i think it is the portuguese with ronaldo and nani up front there so I have to say Croatia here because you can't win a game without holding the midfield. So if you guys want to consider some midfielders, it is definitely Perisic and also Rakitic because they have been very involved in most of the attacks, creating lots of chances and also distribution of balls. For forwards on the other hand, a cheap option is Nani. Nani has been really great for Portugal this tournament and definitely Ronaldo too is one player to consider because he looks fired up right now and could be really deadly in that match. Moving on to the fourth match it is the host France taking on Republic of Ireland pretty simple to call here I have France to win this match and if you guys are looking for any defenders I think Adil Rami is a pretty solid choice for France Midfielders wise, Dimitri Payet is a great option. He really looks great. He was rested in the final match of the group stage but was brought on as a substitute as France was looking to break the deadlock. But it did not happen but Payet still looking really good. Forwards, you guys can consider Olivier Giroud but he missed lots of chances. On the other hand, Antoine Griezmann looks to start scoring again because first two matches, the first match he didn't score, second match he was benched, the, but he came on and actually scored a goal. So he has something to prove. 
So if you guys want to invest some money in Antoine Griezmann, it is a great option so because I think he's a great player if he just tries to take his chances and play along with the team and not try too hard. Moving on to the next match, it is Germany taking on Slovakia. Well, the Germans didn't look too convincing in the group stage and they have not scored too many goals and against Poland they drew 0-0 and in the final group stage they only won 1-0 courtesy of Mario Gomez and I think if Joachim Lowe starts Gomez in the later matches such as the round of 16 he would probably score lots of goals because that guy is a goal scoring machine even before Robert Lewandowski was in Bayern Munich he was the main man for Bayern Munich to score lots of goals so in this match, if you guys are looking for some midfielders, definitely Tony Cruz has been really surprising. He has played a lot of good balls into the midfield and attack and he looks really good alongside with Mesut Ozil who is at 8.5 million euros. If you guys are looking for a cheap option, Tony Cruz at 7.0 million euros. Definitely in attack, you guys can go for Thomas Muller at 10.5 million. But if you guys are willing to take a risk, why not take Mario Gomez at 8 million euros? Because I think if he starts matches, he would definitely back some goals because he is more of a natural striker. He just scores, simply said. Slovakia, you guys can take a look at Marek Hamsik in the second match. He played really well in the group stage and he is the main man for Slovakia. He plays with lots of passion and hopefully he'll get a goal or two but for me I think Germany would win this match and move on to the quarterfinals. Next up we have Hungary taking on Belgium. Belgians after having a bad start to the tournament somehow found their groove and I think they look to win Hungary and progress on. Well, the Belgian players definitely Kevin De Bruyne looks pretty solid. He has been very very involved in most of the attacks creating lots of chances for his teammates but he is at 10 million euros so slightly pricey there but still a great option because he really really is value for money. Eden Hazard 9.5 million euros if you guys are looking for forwards, Romelu Lukaku looks pretty solid and he looks to score lots of goals in the tournament should Belgium progress on. Lukaku is at 9 million euros so should consider him if you guys are looking for a decent goal scoring striker. Moving on to the final two matches, it is Italy taking on Spain. Well, the Spanish could have avoided the Italians if they were to win or draw against the Croatians. But sadly, it was not meant to be. They are now facing the Italians who looked really, really solid in the first two matches, especially against Belgium, where they won 2-0. Well, the Italians, some players to consider. Definitely from the back, the defenders. Leonardo Bonucci at 5.6 million euros has been really solid at the back with Chiellini and one defender that stands out because he plays in the midfield is Giacerini and he is at 5.1 million euros. He has amounted a total of 18 points over the two matches that he played so that is really really decent I should say. Bonucci on the other hand 16 points but still really really good but I'm not sure if they can contain the Spanish offense because as you know Spain plays with a lot of possession, a lot of short passes and they can somehow break down the defense with that. And also definitely Iniesta and Silva in the Spanish side, they know what to do. Fabregas, not forgetting him, they know what to do to break down this kind of defense. They have played at the highest stage in Europe before. Remember, Spain are the two-time defending champions and many of these players play for their clubs at the highest stage, such as the Champions League. But sticking with Italy, some midfielders to consider, well, 
I think midfielders for Italy, we can have Kandreva, but somehow he is injured. There's a notification there in the fantasy app that he is injured and doubtful. So maybe not a good idea to take him in. Florenzi looks really decent, I should say. He's always involved in the attacks, down the flanks, providing lots of crosses. Well, in attack, the Southampton forward Pele and also Ada, who looks pretty interesting because he is really, really good in attack. And at only 6.5 million euros, I think Ada is a pretty good pick for a budgeted striker moving on to spain defensively definitely consider one front and also sergio ramos do remember that sergio ramos is on penalties although he actually missed one but i thought that is really really a controversial one because against the croatians because i think Serna asked modric where is ramos going to place the penalty and he actually told his goalkeeper Subasic and somehow Subasic was able to save that penalty. Midfielders for Spain, well, Andres Iniesta looks pretty solid. He has created lots of chances for the Spanish side and Fabregas is there too alongside with Silva but Silva is pretty expensive. So nothing much there from the Spanish midfield but in attack. Alvaro Morata and Nolito look really, really good. Morata at 8.5 million and Nolito at 6 million. So if you guys are looking for some budgeted strikers, definitely one of these two players. But don't take them both because if Spain gets eliminated from the tournament, then you have two free transfers to waste on these two guys. And finally, we move on to the English side taking on Iceland. Well, England didn't look too convincing in the opening group matches. All three of them, they weren't too convincing. And Iceland, on the other hand, looked pretty decent with Gilfie Sigurdsson leading the attack. He has looked pretty, pretty good showing how he played in Swansea. And I think the English would have a little bit of a problem if they are not able to contain him. Well, for the English players, Eric Dyer is a good defensive player to consider because he actually plays in the center defensive role instead of the back four. And midfielders, Dali Ali is still a decent budgeted option, but he hasn't shown his capabilities too much in the English side. Maybe it is their playing style, but Ali hasn't been able to create lots of chances for his teammates and also for himself. Definitely the forwards, we have Jamie Vardy and Daniel Sturridge. Hopefully Roy Hodgson will start these two instead of Harry Kane, who didn't look too sharp in the first two matches. And Finally, Gilfi Sigurdsson is the player to consider if you guys are looking for a decent midfielder. And that is all for me today. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. And if you did, do give it a thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And let me know how your team is shaping up for the round of 16. Remember that you have unlimited amount of transfers. Therefore, you can plan and make your team into a really good one before match day 4 begins. And... If you guys have any questions, do leave them in the comment section. I would get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon.